Well, hey everybody, and welcome to the online version of the worship service. We are here on location at the yard of Armstrong Grade School, and next weekend is the start of the Armstrong Outreach Tent Revival Meeting. And so we are really excited. There have been a lot of people praying for this event, a lot of people who have signed up to help with this event, and so we are just excited to see what God is going to be doing right here next weekend. Amen. Amen. Very good. And so, so we just want to, again, just invite you, be praying. Please be praying about uh, what God is going to do. Please be praying for the people that will come, that God would change hearts for all the, the servants that will be uh, serving, the band, uh, the Eric Westlake, the speaker. Please be praying for all these folks. And there's still time for you to help. And so if you would like to help, you can call this guy. You can call this guy. You can just get a hold of us, and we would love to uh, uh, point you in the right direction on how you can help God's work here in Armstrong. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And so a uh, couple more announcements for us. Uh, the, the food distribution is also going to be next weekend in Rantoul, and so you can talk to Gary for uh, more details on that. And then uh, in a few weeks, uh, September 12th is Rally Sunday, so we're going to have an outdoor service in the backyard of St. Paul's for that. And so uh, with that, I would love if you prayed for us, and we'll continue worshiping the Lord. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you, God, for all that you are planning for your people, and we look forward God, to an outpouring of your glory, your grace, your goodness here in Armstrong. Yes, We're yes. asking you to fill the gap. Uh, Gifford, Armstrong, Penfield, Potomac, Royal, Collison, fill the gap with your glory, oh God. We thank you in advance, oh God, for what you are going to do here through the outreach in Armstrong, yes. under the tent, God, thank with you, your Lord. people gathering, God, people coming to know you, Jesus, hearing your word proclaimed. And God, we give you great uh, praise today. Thank you. God. We give you great praise. Thank you for gathering the churches together. So we pray in agreement with St. John and Royal. Mm -hmm. We pray in agreement with the Potomac Nazarene Church. Yes, we pray Lord. in agreement here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. And we pray in agreement with Hooves of Hope. Mm -hmm. And oh God, accomplish all that you desire yes, in the hearts and in the lives of the people. And Lord God, right now, we give you our worship and our praise. And we submit this worship service to you. For we're coming together in the mighty name of Jesus, and it's in his great name that we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the first scripture reading is in Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 9. If you have your Bible, you can go ahead and pull that out. Pause the video if you need to find the place. That's Ezekiel 33, starting with verse 1. Ezekiel writes, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the sons of your people, and say to them, If I bring a sword upon the land, and the people of the land take one man from among them, and make him their watchman, and he sees the sword coming upon the land, and blows on the trumpet, and warns the people, then he who hears the sound of the trumpet, and does not take warning, and a sword comes and takes him away, his blood will be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood will be on himself. But he had taken war had he taken warning, he would have delivered his life. But if a watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and a sword comes and takes a person from them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from the watchman's hand. Now as for you, son of man, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel. So you will hear a message from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked man, you will surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from your hand. But if you on your part warn a wicked man to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he will die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your life. The second reading is in the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 15 through 16. That's first letter, first Peter, chapter 3, starting with verse 15. 
Peter writes, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence, and keep a good conscience, so that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. And then the third scripture reading is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 7 through 8. Matthew 10, beginning with verse 7. Jesus told the disciples, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you receive. Freely give. May God bless the reading of His Word. And may God bless us as we continue to worship Him together. Good morning, friends, and we're just excited again to gather together in the Word of God, and I'm so thankful to be a part of a people who continue to allow God's Word to be in the center of what we're doing, and we continue to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're exalting His name here at St. Paul's, and so we want to invite you today, as we turn to the Word of God, let's bow our heads and continue Seek the Lord together. Would you do that with me now? Father God, we do 
humble ourselves in your presence. We lift you up, Jesus, in our minds and in our hearts. And we lift up your name, Jesus. And we desire that you would make yourself known to us. Speak to our hearts. Oh, God, and accomplish all that you desire. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've been intentionally over the last few weeks uh, looking to the Word of God and, and praying, Holy Spirit, prepare us as a congregation for an outreach in Armstrong. And most all of you, if not all of you know, we're getting ready for that outreach coming this coming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Obviously, August 27, 28, 29. And we're, we're so thankful to be doing this in, in unity together here as a congregation and in agreement with the church in Royal, St. John Lutheran Church, and with the Potomac Nazarene Church. I'm so thankful for the partnership in the gospel that God is bringing and encouraging us in as we are workers together in the harvest for the sake of the name of Jesus Christ. Well, Today, we have a simple sermon entitled, We Sound the Alarm to Save. When there's an alarm, it's to save. Yes, it's to alert, but ultimately that alert, that sounding of the alarm is to save. Many of you can remember November 2013. And you can remember the tornado coming. And when you today hear a tornado siren, most of you are alarmed. And you're aware of the fact that that tornado siren is sounding the alarm, yes, to alert, to caution, to warn, but to save. Ultimately, we sound alarms to save. However, most of us have alarms going off Alerts, maybe throughout the day to remind us of a meeting. And I'm just kind of curious, what is the alarm that you like uh, to, to wake up to or that you like to have your phone set in order to alert you? A follow-up question, how many of you honestly set an alert 15 minutes before the alarm and then you set another alarm maybe 30 minutes before and then you actually have the alarm going off to alert you it's time. And so you have multiple alarms going off to get you ready. I would confess that I push the snooze button. Growing up as a little boy, my mom would come and wake me up to get ready for elementary school. And already as a little boy, I remember saying to my mom, five more minutes. And so that kind of prepared me for a lifetime of pushing the snooze. Yes, I'm the youngest child, and when mom came to wake me up and I asked for five minutes, she was gracious to me. And so now, I have the alarm going off to my wife's chagrin, and I push snooze. And then it goes off again, and I push snooze. And sometimes it goes off again. It's very interesting to think about the alarm settings that we have on our phones. You can choose almost any sound you want. In my bedroom, the alarm clock, you can awaken to white noise. Or you can awaken to the sound of uh, crickets in the forest. You can awake to the sound of the waves of the ocean. We wake up to beep, 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 beep. What is the alarm? that you have set on your phone? That's a fun question. Well, this morning we're going to be looking at a chapter in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. And I want to invite you to turn to Ezekiel 33. Many of you have studied Ezekiel, a priest, during the time of exile. And the Israelites, during that time, were scattered about and the Lord came to Ezekiel in chapter 1 and began to give him visions of what the Lord wanted him to do. And in Ezekiel chapter 2, God called Ezekiel to go and to speak to the rebellious people of Israel. 
the exiles and to call them back. And he warned Ezekiel, they are a stubborn and rebellious people, but continue to speak to them. And now we turn all the way to Ezekiel 33. And we read in verses 1 and 2 of Ezekiel 33, The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, speak to your people and say to them, If I bring the sword upon a land and the people of the land take a man from among them and make him their watchman, And if he sees, in verse 3, the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people, verse 4, then if anyone who hears the sound of the trumpet does not take warning and the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. Look at verse 1 again. It says, the word of the Lord came to me. And what God was speaking to Ezekiel was all about seeing the sword of the Lord coming upon the land. Seeing the sword of the Lord. And now I have a sword. And if this sword were to come upon anyone or anything, it wouldn't do any damage because it's just a child's decoration But if the sword of the Lord comes upon the land, there's destruction, there's judgment ultimately, and there is fear shaking the people when the sword of the Lord comes. If you read the the Bible from beginning to end, the, the word sword represents a lot of different things, but the one thing that the sword of the Lord represents in the prophetic writings, and even in the book of Revelation, is judgment coming from the will of God against rebellious people. It's judgment judging people in their sin, and when the sword of the Lord comes upon a land, people die. And that's what we see from the days of Noah, where judgment came as the floodwaters came, and we see it Over and over again, God allowing the sword to come and people running for their lives. Many of you saw this week on the news as Afghanistan had a power change. You saw that on the news and you watched as the Taliban again retained or took control of Kabul. And we see the sword of the Lord, the judgment of God coming upon a land. And we don't want to see the sword of the Lord coming. But Ezekiel is warned, if I, God speaking in Ezekiel 33 verse 1, if I bring the sword upon a land. And so the Lord instructed that the people then would make would take a man from among them and make make him their watchmen. Well, many of you are still wondering, what does the sword of the Lord look like? In Hebrews 4, verse 12, it says that the word of God is alive and active, and it's it's sharper than a double-edged sword. And it is penetrating even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. There, the sword or the word of God is the spiritual sword, the spiritual working of the word of God. But here in Ezekiel, we're talking about a legitimate physical sword of judgment where people are dying and being consumed by the sword. And we see finally in Revelation 19, verses 11 through 16, when Jesus will come again on the white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. Jesus coming on a white horse with the sword coming from his mouth. It says that he will judge and wage war with eyes like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. And it says that coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. And that will be the final way that we see the sword of the Lord coming 
on the lands, judging the nations of the world. Well, Ezekiel hears the word of the Lord. It came to him in Ezekiel 33. And he's talking about the sword. And the first point that we, we want to receive from the scriptures today is that today there is a need for watchmen. For the people of God to be watching for the sword, to be looking for the judgment of God coming upon the nations of the world, coming upon and coming across, sweeping and judging people living in their sin. And the goal of the sword of the Lord is to alert us that, that God is a holy God. He is a just God and he reserves his sword for judgment but he does judge the nations of the world. And so we need, like in Ezekiel's day, for there to be watchmen. People who are allowing themselves to be aware of the sword of the Lord coming. And that we would be alerting one another. Look with me at what the word of the Lord says to Ezekiel. In verse 3, if he sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people. And so the watchman, the prophet, here Ezekiel, the priest of God, functions as the prophet of the Lord. And he warns the people all throughout the book of Ezekiel according to the word of the Lord. And today there is a need for watchmen to pick up the trumpet. <laughs> And to speak, to allow their mouths to utter the declarations of the Lord. You and I need to learn. I don't know how to play the trumpet very well. I've just been learning today. And I have a lot of work to do. That might have hurt your ears. The word of the Lord is to warn like a trumpet, a siren calling people, warning people, causing them to shake and causing them to look around as the watchman sees the sword of the Lord coming upon the land. The, 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 role, the role of the prophet, the role of the preacher, the role of the word of God is to warn the people of the judgment of God. And so look with me. As we look at verse 3 again, if he, the watchman, sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people. See, that is the job of the prophet in the church. Even today, the men and women of God who are full of the Holy Spirit and in speaking, led by the word of God, warning the people of what God's word says, bringing the living word of God and uttering it. And allowing the word of God to be that sword of the spirit. Wearing the full armor of God. The word is like a trumpet that sounds the siren. And it warns the people in order to save them and to call them to Jesus. In verse 7 of Ezekiel 33. The Lord says, the word of the Lord came. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them a warning from me. And so, it is very necessary that the prophet would warn with a sound like a trumpet. That, that siren of the word of God, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. And many of us need the alert, we need the siren, we need the warning. To return to the Lord with humility. To return to the Lord. To come before him with an attitude of repentance. Confessing our sin. Coming with a contrite and a humble heart. Turning from our sin. Many of you are wondering. Is Ezekiel the only one? Is Ezekiel the only prophet who speaks this way? No, many of the prophets speak this way. For example, Joel, in Joel chapter 2, verse 1, he actually says, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. And so, 
we have this idea from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verses 1 and 2. Watch for the sword. And then we have in verses 3 and 7, sound the alarm. Blow the trumpet. And we hear Joel saying, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. And we recognize the men of Israel of old grabbing the, if you will, the ram's horn. And in blowing that on the mountain for everyone to hear. Calling them. Warning them. And we ultimately sound the alarm to save. We read in the book of Luke chapter 12 verses 4 and 5. Some very simple verses for us. Again, Luke chapter 12 verses 4 and 5. I tell you, my friends, Jesus is speaking here in Luke 12 verse 4. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body. And after that, have nothing more that they can do. But I warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed you, has the authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Fear him, Jesus says. In fact, Jesus is saying, fear the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying that we should fear him because he has the judgment in his hand. He is able to judge and to cast into hell those who have rebelled against God the Father, those that rebelled against Himself, God the Son, and those who rebel against God the Spirit. There are those today who are hearing the word of God, like in Ezekiel's day, and they're rebellious. Many of us have been rebellious. We've not been willing to turn from our sin. We've not been willing to turn away from our idols, and rather we have ignored the word of the Lord. And today, I believe that the prophet Ezekiel's words apply to us today. I believe that the word of the Lord in chapter 2 of Ezekiel, that there are many people in the church today who are rebellious. And we need to hear the humble word of the prophet Ezekiel. And we need to hear the alarm, the trumpet sounding, the word of God reverberating. And so, Jesus is the prophet. He is the king. He is the priest. He is the Lord of the church, the husband, and he would tell you and me to fear him. You and I should fear the Lord Jesus Christ above any man, above any army, above any government leader. We should fear Jesus for Jesus is the one who will come with the sword coming from his mouth to bring judgment to the nations of the world. Yes, his eyes will be like a blazing fire. Yes, he will come riding on a white horse. Yes, he will come and on his thigh and on his robe, his name will be written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And so you and I do not need to fear the sword, but we need to be watching for it today. And we need to be sounding the alarm of the word of God and opening our voices. And so finally, as we look at the first point, watch for the sword. As we acknowledge the second point in our sermon, warn with the trumpet, just like the prophets of old. Let's be that today in accordance with the word of God, submitting to the Lord Jesus Christ, but announcing his word. We should fear him who has the power to send a rebellious, wicked, sinful person, unrepentant. He has the power to send that one to hell. And finally, the third point we get from Matthew chapter 10, that we should be witnesses everywhere we go. Not only watching for the sword of the judgment of the Lord, not only warning with the trumpet, but now finally, look with me at Matthew chapter 10. As we read and learn from Jesus, as he's sending his disciples out, so he sends you and I out. 
Matthew chapter 10, beginning with verse 7. Matthew chapter 10, beginning with verse 7. And I apologize right now for that is not the right chapter. And so, uh, or I was in Mark. So if you're in Mark, turn with me to Matthew chapter 10. How many of you are in Matthew? Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. Here it is. And proclaim as you go. In other words, just like the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel, it came to Ezekiel and then Ezekiel shared it. Jesus, the living word of God, came to the disciples and he taught the people in Jerusalem. And then he said these words, proclaim as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so you and I, we have the living word of God. And as we go, we get to proclaim the word of God that's been spoken to us. And the very simple word of God that you and I can proclaim to our family members, to our friends and our co-workers. We can go to people, lovingly go, prayerfully go, and we can tell people lovingly, the kingdom of heaven is near. And we can wait and see what people say in response to that. We can say to them, the kingdom of heaven is near. But Jesus didn't stop there in Matthew 10. Look at what he says next. Heal the sick. We can pray for people that are sick. We can lay hands on them. And then he says in verse 8 of Matthew 10, raise the dead. Cast, uh, cleanse lepers and cast out demons. You and I get to go with the living word of God, the spiritual word of God, the authoritative word of God. And we get to believe God to work in and through us, proclaiming as we go, the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here. Jesus has come and he is coming again. And we can watch for the sword of the Lord. We can warn with the trumpet of God's word, that piercing, penetrating, authoritative word, just as a trumpet would cause us Pay attention. So the word of God calls us to pay attention today. Witness everywhere we go. And Peter agrees with this as he writes in 1 Peter 3 verse 15. In your hearts, honor or set apart Christ as Lord. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope you possess. Peter's teaching you and I everywhere we go to be a witness because we have set Jesus as the Lord of our lives. Everywhere we go, we proclaim the kingdom of heaven is near because we've set Jesus in front of us and our eyes are fixed upon him. With all of this in mind, we are getting ready to hear The trumpet sound in Armstrong in our outreach. The trumpet of God's word is going to be proclaimed by Pastor Eric Westlake. And we are going to gather together with the people of Gifford, Armstrong, Penfield, Potomac, Royal, Collison, and the rest of the people that the Lord gathers together. We are trusting the Father to gather people there to draw them to Jesus. We are trusting the work of the Holy Spirit to bring conviction to bring enlightenment, to bring revelation. And so today in your life, may you recognize throughout all of human history, the sword of the Lord coming in bringing judgment upon the sin of the world. And could you, would you please be training yourself in the word of God so that you, that we together, can blow the trumpet, sound the alarm in order to save. Jesus is coming again. And then with that in mind, let's together be witnesses everywhere we go, proclaiming the kingdom of heaven is near. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for the word that you bring to us. We thank you for in Ezekiel's day, just like in our day, that you give your people visions and dreams of what you're wanting them to see and to know and to do. 
Oh God, would you continue to raise up prophets in our day? Would you raise up those that would be willing to sound the alarm just as you had Ezekiel do in his day? Oh God, would you continue to raise up apostles, sent ones, missionaries, God, those that would be willing to go just as you sent out the 12, would you continue to send us out so that everywhere we go, we would be sent out by you proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. I pray, O oh God, that you'd allow us to be discerning in our day, that we would be recognizing you bringing the sword, judgment on the sin of the world. And Lord God, let us continue to take refuge in Jesus Call us out of darkness. Call us away from our idols. For we repent and we turn to you today. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all of our sin. And we ask you, O oh God, to bring mercy and grace to the hearts of the people in Gifford, Armstrong, Penfield, Potomac, Royal, Collison, and beyond. And we ask, O oh God, that you would accomplish your will during the nights of the outreach in Armstrong and beyond. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us continue to lift our voices and worship the Lord together in song. you would you learn like me that's terrible <laughs> but would you learn like me to play the trumpet rather would you learn to announce the Word of God and to bring loving and gentle warning to your friends would you be allowing yourself to be trained daily in the Word of God that you would have the word of God, that you'd take the sword of the spirit with you and allow it to accomplish God's full work in your life, in your heart and mind. And then you can walk in the confidence and in the authority of the word of God as you submit to God himself. We read one final verse as our benediction today. It's 1 Chronicles 16, 24. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Let's do that in our own way, in our own lives. Let's declare God's glory everywhere that we go. His marvelous works among the people. And so would you pray today even right now oh god open my eyes to see you working open my ears that i could hear you and lord lift up my eyes that i would praise you 
Oh, God, I give you glory. And so it's fellowship time now. And I want to encourage you to download the Faith Conversations from our church's website, stpaulsgifford.org. Would you, would you open up those uh, Faith Conversations and have the connecting the dots questions and then dig deeper, open up the scriptures and dig into the Word of God and allow God's Word to teach you. And may God bless you. And we'll look forward to being together by the grace of God in Armstrong this Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. And may God continue to lead us everywhere we go, proclaiming his kingdom is near. Amen. Oh